More now on President Joe Biden's State of the Union address from last night. This second State of the Union address in front of a Republican-controlled House of Representatives. The president laying out not only his agenda, as you heard, but also his accomplishments and parts of his speech turning into a rowdy back and forth with members of the GOP. So let's get the latest insight now from ABC's political director, Rick Klein. Rick, we appreciate your time as always. First of all, give me your thoughts on the speech overall, how you think the president did. It certainly wasn't an easy audience at times. No, but I think he turned that audience to his advantage in as many ways as he could. Uh, it was certainly the most give and take I've ever seen in the speech to see people actively uh, shouting at him uh, and him sometimes engaging back to see the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, urging his own members to, to, to pipe down a bit. All of it made for more entertaining theater. And I think Biden played it to his advantage because he was able to portray himself as someone that went to bat for working people, uh, tried to marginalize some of the Republicans. At one point, it even seemed like he was negotiating with them on the fly when they uh, booed the, the suggestion that they wanted to cut Medicare and Social Security. He said, OK, look, we can agree then. We're not going to cut those entitlement programs. That would be a major, a major achievement by itself. So I think Given the, the odd and unusual circumstances around all of it, it was about as good a performance as the president in the White House could have hoped for. And usually he seems very scripted. So to be able to have this give and take where he seemed to be, at least it seemed to be more off the cuff, was definitely interesting to see, I thought. Yeah, look, I think most presidents are going to want to keep to the script. Yeah. And uh, you, you, you've written that speech. You, it's in the teleprompter. Um, you know how to deliver it. You're used to being heckled, frankly, in public life these days. It's not a new thing. Uh, but I think President Biden read the room and read the moment and, and recognized that if Republicans wanted to shout him down, that he could uh, engage a little bit, single them out, uh, make them look small, make them look petty, and call them out, in his view, for some uh, policy hypocrisies. And uh, I think that he used the forum in a way that, frankly, we haven't seen um, any previous president, to my knowledge, use. Okay, so aside from that, it was certainly worth noting, what would you say the biggest takeaways were overall? I mean, he definitely laid out his agenda. Republicans, of course, are intent on blocking it. And that ongoing impasse on the debt ceiling obviously was apparent. Yeah, and like I think we saw from the president, he basically said, look, I want to do more of what I've done in the previous two years, which is striking given the polling numbers with 58 percent of Democrats even saying they don't want him to run for a second term. He seemed to brush that aside and said, look, stay the course. Let's continue to do what we've been doing. Finish the job, he said more than a dozen times. And I think that was the message that he was trying to leave people with is that we've gotten here by virtue of some of the hard work over the last couple of years. Some of the programs that were implemented in the last Congress are only now coming into place. Uh, he wants the American people to stick with him, to, to stick by him. Uh, that's not an easy ask, and it comes at a politically difficult moment for him. But um, I think he, he showed last night some of that potential strength. And, you know, you mentioned the approval rating right now, which obviously for the president isn't great. But he definitely referred to a number of times finishing the job, seemed to be, uh, you know, talking about his reelection campaign that we know is, is certainly coming. Uh, and I'm just wondering, you know, could this have changed any minds out there? As you mentioned, many in his own party don't want him to run. But... As you're saying, you thought it was a good night for him. I think it's less about even convincing people that are never going to vote for him or might be undecided to vote for him, to, more to, to convince fellow Democrats that he's up to the job. He's 80 years old. Um, there's no one said he hasn't looked great. Last night he looked terrific, and I think he was strong. He was robust. He was powerful throughout and, and showed in that give and take that he's got his A game. And it's hard to do that every day over the course of a campaign. He's got 600 some odd days until the next election day. Uh, and, and I don't know how anyone does that, much less someone who's, who's north of 80 years old. But to show that he's got the fight, to show that he's willing to take that fight to, to, his, to his critics and his rivals, I think was a, a pretty powerful statement. Appreciate your time as always, Rick, and we'll be talking again soon. Thank you.